Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of our program. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle. And today we have with us Dr. Frank Gibson, who is with the Last Call program. And I'd like to welcome you to the program, Frank. Hello, Mike. Uh, as you know, in our conversations, I'm a big fan of innovation, and I think your programs really have done a lot and can do a lot in the future to inspire people. And I'd like to thank you for your work and your excellent program. Sounds good. Well, I appreciate that. And um, just want to ask you, give us a little bit of about your background and um, what led you to your current project. Well, I have a company called Island Care, and uh, I founded it 10 years ago, and it um, it's, involves a product and a service. We, we created a program called Last Call Program because of the great need for addiction in this country. And I think that's kind of, if you ask me how, directly how I got into it, it's because I realized having three clinics that alcohol-related problems were exacerbated or caused a good number of the of the diseases and illnesses that people were coming to see me about. And we developed this program, and it, and it, it, it ended up being a very significant part of what we did in the clinics. And I decided to take it out into a company and present a completely different view of addiction to attract the 15, 16 million people a year who never seek treatment. Yeah, you know, that's a, a huge, huge industry, and I'm sure you faced, you know, major obstacles and, and you know, kind of like turning the, the, the tide of, of decades and centuries. So how did you feel about when you entered into that, and, and could you make a difference, kind of like throwing a pebble in the ocean? Well, it was daunting, I will say. Um, but our, in our clinics, our success rates were hitting 84% at the end of a full year. And it wasn't something that, I mean, at my stage of life, I've been very fortunate in business. I've had some fun. I've made some money. And I felt like this is something personally. I mean, it's a, it was a total shift. Uh, it's, someone said, why are you a great entrepreneur? I said, no, I'm not an entrepreneur. I have to say I wanted to make a profit doing this, but I felt a strong responsibility because I created this product that had had changed thousands of lives and yes you're right the, there's the, there's a lot of barriers to entry into what is a 35 billion dollar addiction industry and they've pretty much had it their way since the 50s they're still doing it the same way they were in the 50s and that's why people aren't getting seeking treatment and then we were entering into um, the $12 billion urban supplement business with huge companies over in place for years. So anybody entering into a business is, is facing that. The intent was, and we did, to create a totally new industry with a direct-to-client, anonymous, at-home, low-cost program for people to restore their lives after having problems with alcohol use disorders. And we literally, the last call started a revolution in the addiction industry, and it's helped over 8,000 people, and quite honestly, Mike, it's the most rewarding and important thing I feel I've ever done in my life. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that, that gets back to like having a cause, and you feel like um, the example of the grandfather and the grandson walking down the beach in the silver dollars. You know, you, you, uh, you throw one back and you're with a starfish, and you know, you know, I'm able to save this one, and the grandson says, well, how can we save everything? You, you know, you're, there's so many here, and he says, but it makes a difference to this one, and it's just focusing on serving and giving in that respect. That's true, and I'm happy that I'm in a stage of my life, where, you know, when when I understand my passion and and I'm I'm willing to do everything it takes. I was willing to do. I left a very comfortable position to to go out and challenge this industry. Yeah, you know, um, what do you find is something that is really working well in your outreach in 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 that uh, approach? I, I think our whole company is based on 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 hope and the fact that there is help. 
underlying everything that we that we do, that how we manufacture, the uniqueness of the products is the fact that people are hopeless, Mike. They're I mean, we see it in so many areas of our country right now and in the world. And they when when they when they read my book or they get a they get a free download of a guide that helps them understand that what's happened because since the fifties we've had enormous changes in the science of addiction. We understand it now. We understand what brain chemicals have gone awry and out of balance. We understand how to help encourage them to come back into balance and that's what people don't know this is now known to be a specific disease with a specific reason and a specific cure unfortunately we haven't seen the shift from the addiction industry to go do that and that's that's quite honestly why I did it it's it is the future yeah you know um, I, I think that it really does start in our mind, in our approach, in our beliefs, our attitudes, what we tell ourselves, what we believe about things. Um, it's kind of like the acronym about fear, false expectations appearing real. You know, it's, it's something that, you know, you believe in your mind and some person might look at something and say, I believe this to be this way and someone else, I believe it to be that way. That's very astute. I like that false expectations appearing real. You know, and I, I'm, I might have to use that somewhere along the line. Like, that's, that's, that's pretty pretty clear. Well, you know, I think that's the problem. I think people don't step out of our comfort zone because of their fear. I, I, everybody, you talk to people, they have a they have a dream, but most of the time they put it off for an entire lifetime because of risk failure. And you know, quite honestly, not to be cynical about it, most people, unless they absolutely know they can put it all on the line, they should put off the dream because it's hard. Mm-hmm. It, it, what do you find people are more reluctant at in person or business in taking that step forward because, you know, they see a dream, they want the dream, but it's hard and then they just don't do anything? I think, I think that they don't really understand passion. You know, if I started this and I ended up broke, I, I'd have more integrity, more self-respect and more dignity than, you know, ever in my life, things that money can't buy. And, and, this, and this has been, you know, this has been a 10 year, you know, upstream and I'm happy about every day, but I, I measure my, my life differently at this stage of life. So I think we're talking about people in different stage of lives. You know, I was fortunate. I knocked it out of the park with a company in my twenties. And so maybe I didn't have some of, some of the pressure, but I feel that there's so many things that, that keeps us from our commitment. Probably fear is is way up on the list, but then there's then there's people around us, the the families, the kids, and you know if it's just you going down that road, and and it's tough, and you're working eighty hours a week, and and you don't really make it, or you do, you know you you you're committed, but other things come in. For me, I think that. I think it's important to understand this and, and look at and that's to answer your question more directly, I'm not sure that people really understand how to even look at it. And I don't mean like you like I love your thing, false expectations, but they don't know how to, to lay out uh, steps and lay out, you know, what do we do? How do we how do we look at this and 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 what do we, what do we have to explore? And maybe the first thing is fear. It, Fear and I think even lack of belief in ourselves and what we can do and what we're capable of, you know, have, uh, have you seen that in your work as well? I have. And I've seen that also in, in you know, in, in the work with, it, with people in addiction and I've seen it in business. People are, they're stagnant and mm. they, they, it's great to have a dream. Last thing I ever do is crush anybody's dream. You know, I'm a sailor, and you hear people, you read, or meet people, and you say, you know, I know a guy who's got forty thousand miles. He's been sailed all over the world, and you know, people say to him, you know, I'm going to do that someday as they're polishing their boat, and he's just, he just looks at him and says, no, you probably won't. Mm. And so, yeah, I think if we, if we could all figure out, especially in my work with addiction, if I could really figure out what's keeping this this person. From, from actually just restoring their life, from changing their life and the life of 10, 20 people around them, I'd be a lot better at what I do. And I spend a good amount of time every day trying to figure that very thing out. Mike will see people go to our program. They'll go all the way into the buy page. They understand they're back to the website 10 you know, times maybe. And, you know, it's 
so many things in life are opportunistic. You know, I guess we tend to maybe think more creatively when we're doing well. I'm not sure. I know the guy that wakes up Monday mornings had a tough weekend and his wife yelled at him all night is, is more likely to go to our website and read about it. But Tuesday, he's kind of sure he can fix it out. So maybe what happens is people don't act. They stay stagnant because they, they do have a plan. They do have a dream. But you know, maybe they don't even know what that first step is. And that's what I like about what, what you do in programs like this is that, you know, people listen. Maybe there's one thing in everything we say. Maybe there's, you know, they, they want to hear about our stories so many times, but they can't really know your story. Uh, I mean, I have respect for what you do. I don't know your story. I know my story. We can know the greatest story ever, but people that are, people that want to go out and do this, Mike, they, they have to know our hearts. They have to know, mm. you know, and I don't know if, if I can even say that clearly. They have to n- understand our level of passion, and that's hard to do. If I, if you're somebody that wakes up and says, someone says, you know, you got to take a spoon and claw through that wall of stone to get out, we're just going to go do it, right? Do you know why? I don't, but I will. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it, because the, the point is maybe it's a shift from a dream to hey, this is real. You know, I'm risking my family. I'm risking this. I'm, you know, I've got a pretty nice deal going here, but I'm going to go out and do something that, you know, really is tough. And I think there's some steps that people can do very specifically to, you know, to go, to go out and do that. I, I, I kind of have a, I make sort of lesson notes to myself and, and I sort of, I find I draw them up. They're important to me. They're sort of ingrained in, in, in my mind. And I think that maybe people don't have that. And that's when they get a chance to hear people like us, maybe some of those things that steps that we take helps wake them up. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you're exactly right. And I think that there's an element too of accountability there that uh, is able to come alongside people and and business personal. uh, um, It doesn't matter what the, you know, level is, it just means that someone else has been there, done that, and they're putting their arm around your shoulder saying, I can help you through it. And and that might be a business struggle. It might be a personal struggle. Yes. And, uh, you know, to me, my own personal spirit, what it comes down to is that, you know, you have to know that just because it's a passion doesn't mean it's not going to fail. I mean, it's great that it's a passion, but you know, that's a real factor. And if you can't deal with that, then you're, you know, then you've got a whole lot of other issues that, that you have to really, really look at. And, um, you know, if maybe people are sick of doing what they're doing. Maybe they're not. I wasn't. I loved my life. I had a good, <laughs> went home every day at one o'clock. It was great. You know, I had three clinics. And but sometimes you just have to go do things. And if I had that magic word, or you had it, and we could, you know, give it to people. But going back to what you said, when you put your arm around people, and you and you say, look, you know, this is possible. And, you know, you've got yourself, you've got whatever you believe spiritually, you've got a lot of things that can support you and you can't go wrong, I believe. And that they have to help us understand how to help them understand that they can't go wrong, that, that it's hard to become aware of what you really want in life. And then you have to become open and fearless to any possibility. Yeah, that's a that's an excellent point, and you know, it made me think of something I've uh, heard a few times in the past, and actually, I used it this past week with someone I was talking to, and it's an old saying I remember hearing that you have to be an active participant in your own rescue. So you can't just go push this button, give it to me. You have to do some work. Exactly, and I think that goes back to: Do people know what work they have to do? To me, there are certain steps. I mean, one of the biggest things that I can say that served my life, my father told me when I was very young and starting to get going and in business, and and he said, all you have to do is know what you need and to never forget the difference between what you want and what you need. Hmm. And when you, when you, when you, what do you need to make your passion happen? That, to me, is one of the first steps. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. 
So you what, know, do you, I, what do you find uh, is helpful once someone has taken that initiative to, to make that first step and then to keep on that path? And this might be a personal uh, goal. It might be a business strategy or goal. But so many times you take that step and then the very first obstacle that comes up or, or you know, speed bump, you go, yep, see, I knew it wouldn't work, and you stop. I think, I think that you're right. And I think that's why people need to think. One of the things that I see, and one of the things I see in the work I do with addiction is obviously family, a spouse, family, business associates. There's, there's so much surrounding. But when people make this decision and have this passion, and they, and they wake up one day and they go to their wife and they say, "Hey, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, carve fish and paint them and sell them, you know, all over the world or whatever their idea is." I mean, it doesn't matter what we think of that as a business. It doesn't matter if it, to me if anybody thought I could go out and sell an eight hundred dollar product online directly to consumers for addiction when no one had ever even thought of it in the world. I had, you know, basically no science at that time to speak of, et cetera. It didn't matter if it's a good idea or not. So I think that going in, you have to understand, question yourself, if you can be totally selfish. Others around you, this is my belief, others around you, your spouse, your family, associates, your friends, will benefit from your commitment um, from your the experience you go through, from the power you generate, and whatever the results are, what could be better than to be around somebody who's just so passionate and so committed that they're not going to fail? I've never had any thoughts of failure. I mean, mm. trust me, there were times when it was close, close, close. But, you know, it's sometimes it was some mother calling me up or sending me emails, so thank you for giving, getting my son back. Why do you buy that? You know, when you have that passion and you, whatever your business is, your family's got to feel it. And you've got to say, okay, this is going to be hard. But, you know, and you keep them involved in it and help them know what's going on. But I think we have to do that. Again, what do you need? I think what people are saying when they really are passionate about a business they want to do or a job they want to go back. They, I mean, a friend of mine used the term a long time ago and it stuck with me, a lifestyle business. Mm -hmm. That means, you know, when you're uh, really pursuing what you love and your business is always a lifestyle business, meaning you're not strictly focusing on reward. You know, and here's the other thing. If you're not focusing on reward, what are you focusing on? And uh, I think that it, it, when we can get our eyes off ourself and put them on other people and maybe giving and serving and pouring into someone else, that helps pull us along as well. Absolutely. It's like an energy stream. When we're in that, it works. You know, I wrote an article once for um, a, a magazine, and, and I, I started with a, a one of the first integrative clinics in, in, the, in the country, um, and I used Chinese herbology and acupuncture and we integrated. If somebody had, you know, head was getting ready to explode with hypertension, of course they need a medication and go, you know, chew on an herb and fix it. And so we were very responsible. We had a lot of lifestyle programs. We were tied into a huge beach resort. And, and so it was, but, the, but what was interesting was uh, the thing grew to, I've seen 10,000 patient visits a year in a town of 10,000 people, 52,000 in the county. It didn't make sense. I never advertised, I, but I just got involved and I was passionate about it. And it, it formed the basis for I think what has become the wellness industry in, in America. But I was asked to write this article and it was, you know, was, I know what they wanted was, what were my business steps? But I wrote the article and it's called a gene, the green ginger jar. And I had a green antique ginger jar on my desk. And when, and I was, you know, I would trust me and started, it was one at a time and I was waiting for the next appointment to show up and people would go to pay. I didn't have anybody helping me. And I'd say, they'd say how much and they'd write a check or I'd pull out some money and I would walk out of the room and I'd say, just, just drop it in there. And they dropped it in the ginger jar. And in my mind, I never took money from them. And anybody that showed up at my clinics, they never asked if they could pay. And if they couldn't pay, they get a $500 certificate to use. Mm -hmm. And as long as they showed up at classes and they did when they were time, they treated me with respect to, that, that, you know, then by this time the clinic had, had grown and we had a lot of people working and they were giving a good service. And the point was that everybody lives through life and they say, the more you give, the more you get. 
but we rarely believe that. And mm-hmm. I proved it in that clinic growing to the size that that little beach clinic grew to. I had two other clinics. And our focus in this company, Mike, as you'll probably know from, from being aware of what we do and our, our websites, is it's not a transaction-oriented company. We're, we're working with people with a real need who don't know there's any real help. And we, we, have, to, we have to say to them, Hey, you know, let's let's help you understand this. This this is a entirely new science that hasn't been part of you know what the National Institute of Health and everybody else is doing. You know, it only it only became part of accepted science five years ago. So we're doing kind of what I did in my clinics. You come here, here you can download part of my book for free. You can download my book. You can you can learn about this. There's nothing even in my book. It's not about go run out and buy this program. It's like you and I talked about. I go on the program like this and, you know, what I did, it makes me really, really happy. And if I can, you know, I'm almost as happy if I inspire someone to go out and live their passion as I inspire someone on the other side of my life that that is inspired to, you know, go get treatment. You know, it's great if they use the last call program, but I want people to know this is out there because once we start demanding this of the 1950s style treatment centers that are running this country, they're going to start putting it in. In the meantime, there's a way out and it's anonymous and it's at home and it's low cost and, you know, it's, it, it meets, it meets all the barriers. So I have a lot of parallels in what I do and how I looked at the barriers I was facing, you know, when I went into this, now I'm facing those barriers and trying to help people understand. And we do it because we're serving them. We're tr- we're helping them, mm-hmm. and it it's just like we we had that attitude in the clinics, and and it grew to an incredible size. It's that's what's growing this. We've had a couple of we've had a, the first market. It was all transaction, and it wasn't me. And you know they had these websites, and yeah, I mean we did we, we had over three thousand clients our first year, and, and when we took it out of the clinics and dropped the price from seventy five hundred to seven hundred ninety nine dollars. And I just, I, you know, who would believe you could go online and sell that? We had 3,300 clients. Mm. And, but it was all transaction oriented. And a friend of mine who used to do my advertising for um, my old restaurant company, my first career, um, he looked at the website. And after he and I had had lunch and I told him all about how, what I was doing, how excited he Frank, I read all the stuff that's on the web. And he says, I didn't see you there anywhere. And that's what this wonderful company that we're working with now is doing is they're saying, look, just tell people, you know, what you, what you want them to understand. And it's crazy. I mean, it really is. And and life does work that way. And it's so enjoyable. And that's, you know, if I have any message to people going into business, it's like, you know, like you said, don't, don't be afraid of it because the, the fear goes away. The fear goes away when you, you know, when you, when you step into that stream that you were talking about, Mike, where you're in, where you're in that passion, and you know, to me, barriers only is uh, there. Yes, there's barriers, but they're not obstacles. For me, barriers are strategy definitions. Hmm. Yeah, it kind of confirms where the need is. Exactly. And well, that's. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say that's that's uh, so many times you don't know what you don't know. And we could probably go off on a two-hour, you know, uh, deep, go deep on that for, for just quite a long time because once something is bring, brought to your awareness and you see where, where an opportunity or an issue is, you can then take that action and start working toward it and combine that with some coaching and accountability and whatever the issue is, personal struggle, business struggle, business opportunity, you know, assessing risk, calculated risk. So I think that um, your work is so so vital in that respect. What what is the best way that uh, people can learn more in uh, about your work and, uh, and how you're impacting lives? Um, the best place to start is our website, lastcallprogram.com. From there, they can go to our YouTube channel, to our podcast, to you know media. They can get to everything, but but it's a good place to start getting educated. And then while they're there, they can download a free guide that really helps them understand this science of addiction as it 
is in the 21st century. And once Mike, once that, once they gain hope and realize that we're here to help, it's pretty much, you know, I mean, we're still around 80, over 80% success rate and that there is a way out. And that's what I want to tell people. Mm. Super. Well, Frank, thank you so much for your time today. It was wonderful getting to know your passion and your approach to um, helping changing people's lives. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.